Today we are on week nine data operation for review for the patterns. First, let's look at the reader head, okay, iterator. And what is iterator? Iterator is something like help you to read some data. Some data that's organized like array, you actually don't need an iterator because you can randomly access some data like uh, array of zero or array of one or something. You can directly access the data. But some data structure like tree, yeah. you will need an iterator to go through okay. that first and then go back, okay? okay? And, but here, because AP Computer Science started and has the tree structure now, so basically most of the examples will still be in array or, tree, uh, or array list. So right here is uh, the hard disk reading head. Okay, the hard disk reading head and tab, they are actually called uh, sequential access device. Sequential access device. What is sequential? That means that they have a reading head, right? Trying to find certain factor and read some data. But it doesn't go around to search for it. So actually it should read some data location right on the reading head. So something like this one maybe is a reading head. So you have I do read some data here. So if you want to search for some data, you have to make the disk to run. You do, you have to make the disk to run. Mm -hmm. To run in order to find for a certain uh, uh, sector and you have moving back to read some data. So that's so-called a sequential. You have to do one DSS instead of multiple dimension DSS. Okay. So in the previous uh, exam in 2017 Q2, there is a uh, rendered a iterator problem. Okay. And then basically you need to use the reader head class. I'll try to here. I want you to uh, build a reader card class. So that class can have the data field of max, write, and index. So basically, you were, I'll give you an array or a list, and then you cannot use the number uh, i to access it. So you have to do like moving the head right, 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 and then you move to certain somewhere, and then actually read the data over there. Okay, so the max number is the maximum number of the uh, edges that are available in the disk. Okay. And then write means, write is available means that the data is moving right. Index okay. is the current reading index. So if I say next, so if I, I say next, actually I'm getting here. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, uh, next function and there's a reset function. Reset function will move back to zero and facing right. Okay, you yeah, can go I, I, this way and go this way. You can go right or go left, but one by one. But reset is to reset to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, question? No, I, I got this. Yeah, basically, I, there is probably a problem in parents as well or somewhere. Parents, uh, there's a one problem for this as well. Okay, so here I'm trying to make it more organized for this set. So there's a move, change direction, is fashion right, right? Proper variant is uh, one question for this. But it's okay. Here, we actually need to write these different functions. And then here, my reading head is maximum number to be zero, originally, index to be zero, and then write to be two. And then I will allow you to set max, and then the index and facing right, that's the initial condition. And get index, get current index, uh, change direction, change the direction, facing right to check if right is, is true or not. Moving on, if facing right, then I will actually uh, continue for an uh, location, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. it, and here you hit the wall, right wall, okay? Yeah. Moving, uh, facing left, I will actually uh, move in left, right? until you hit the wall. And next function actually is, uh, it, it will check the direction. If, if it's actually uh, at the boundary, it will change direction. And then 
move uh, one. If not, then it actually will. If not, it's not a not facing. Uh, not facing right, and then you uh, go the other way. If you actually hit the left, uh, this is left boundary, this is right boundary, and then this one is actually the normal condition. Normal condition is a move one, okay? And that's the about next. So class test head actually using both next reset and move to control the reading head. So here I have data that is, and then part A, I actually try to get the uh, data uh, from a, the current index and then move that next. So continue to do that uh, to, to read the data. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then actually you would do three times, three rep reps. So going right, going left, going right, something like that. So three, uh, uh, three times the data length. So it will actually more than three times actually. Because on the boundary, you will go back right away. You won't repeat this one uh, once. All right. After that, actually, uh, I would copy, actually, I would actually get the index and then continue the move suite, box, suite, box, something like that. And eventually, part A, I have like three, three times, then it's time. It would go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and then go back to 20, 30. So this one, H is right and then left and then right and then left. Okay. And then this one, part B is jumping by three bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here actually I just repeat to show you how to, if there is some iterator problem, what, what should be done? There's a careful for the next function for the boundary. And then the move function, you have to move uh, according to the direction you are moving now. Okay, and then there's a left right problem if you handle that. And but you certainly cannot do like a, a just jump to a certain pie. That that actually is not reading head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the problem here. Just a review. <clears throat> so second one available list. That's AP 2016 Q1 is actually for uh, AP 2016 uh, one. I'm sorry, I turned on the camera. Uh, actually, it actually is uh, for this problem. It's actually for uh, available list. Now I'm trying to write a selection so using the available list. Okay, this is the example I want to give you. Okay, today I'm going to go through this review set faster, and I will have something to work out with you as actually. So first part, let's do this. Uh, here has a selection sort. I'm trying to use the available list to do selection sort. So right here, I have a selection sort. I have an array, right? But mm -hmm. here, I actually set up a list. Okay, this one is the list. So I actually make a B array. Okay, so there's a data array. There's a B array. There's an A list. And this A list is available list. So this A list is called available list. Okay, it is the available list. So what does the available list do? This one is available list. This is the target B that actually will be used to for sorting. Okay. Okay. So now I, uh, I'm actually, I'm sorry. B actually is the available list. I'm sorry, B is the available list. Okay, B is the available list. And, and A actually is the data, data list to to insert the data in, okay? Oh, you could have a list of, you could have an array of Booleans? I didn't know that. Yeah, you can have that, yes. So right here, actually, uh, what, what is going on is like, I have a data here, called data, right? And then say, I have a one, three, two, five, six, something like that. This is my data, right? And then I have a Boolean uh, here, I have a Boolean, Function so here initially it is all set to one 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 two 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 is that okay? Uh -huh. Everything set to true, okay? Yeah. And then I have an empty list called A, okay? Mm -hmm. And after that, actually, uh, here actually I try to find the minimum value and uh, index J, right? 
-hmm. So I find a minimum value. So for example, this time I found this guy's minimum, right? Mm -hmm. And then actually I will turn this available this to be false. And then I put that minimum one into here. That's what it is right now. Mm. Okay. Mm. After that, actually, I will actually what? I'll continue. I'll continue to go through the array. Actually, I come from the first time I get started from zero. Second time, actually, I. Uh, actually still going from zero and compare everything. But if that variable is not available, then I will not check it. So the second time, the, the one is already unavailable. So I pick the two and I put two in here and make it unavailable. Okay. And yeah. this time, actually, third time, actually, I pick three and yeah. turn it to be unavailable. Okay. Something like that is called a variable list sorting. So then I pick this one, turn it to be false. And then I turn that one and made it to be false. Yeah. So I actually have the array list. And then after that, I re return the available list as a sorted uh, array list. Mm -hmm. Is that OK? Yeah. So this is a selection sort by using the available list and uh, the array list to, to input them. The data. So today I'm going probably a little bit faster. Okay. Now I have an example for building a hotel class, right? And for the hotel class is not related to a verbal list, uh, not related to selection. So, but it actually is a class that will use the verbal list. That means mm -hmm. that I have a, a number of room n num right and then available that num is the total number of room for the hotel and available is the number of available room and then available list is the list that the room are available so now i'll check if the n room number n is available or not as it is available and then i'll check is full to check if the hotel is full and then i'll have the check in function and check out function is that okay? That's yeah. normal, right? That's yeah. normal for hotel, right? Okay, right here, my hotel class, I have a num available a, a list, okay? And this a list actually is a, a variable list by using the Boolean array. So this is the way to write Boolean array. Okay, Boolean is a data type, so of course it can be used for as an array. So initial condition, I have the earn, so I set it to earn, and earn, total earn are available, right? And then my variable list, is actually boolean n num, right? So then I set every room to be true, to be available, right? Okay, that's the initial condition. The total number of rooms is n num. The available room is also num, right? And then every one is true. Now, if I check in, okay, let's look at the check in. For check in number n, if n is available, then I set the room available is n to be unavailable. So the n are apparently need to be zero to n minus one, right? Because we that's our system. Is that okay? And then I decrease the number of available, but none still the same. The, the total number of rooms is the same. But available drop if you check in somebody. Is that okay? Hello? Yeah I I, I understand. And uh, if you check out, then I'll check if the room is unavailable, right? If it is unavailable, then I set it to be true. I check out, right? And increase huh. the number of available room, right? Yeah. And then here for checking is available. I'll set that number, this one need to be less than num. Should have an n actually greater or equal to zero as well, but let's assume it's all positive and zero, okay? Mm -hmm. And then a variable n should be true, right? Then we return true. Yeah. Otherwise, we will return false. Yeah. Right? Is full, yeah. then we will say if a variable is greater than zero. Okay. Oh. Let me see. But wouldn't it be less? 
No, it should be should be equal zero. I'm sorry. Oh, equal. Sorry, yeah. Cause yeah, this one should equal. So here is a bug. I'll check check it. Okay. Okay. I'll check it. This one is wrong. Okay. Should be checking whether it is zero or not, right? Uh -huh. And then here is a two string. Here is a two string function. Okay, here is a two string function to check. Uh, I'll print out a two string function. Here's a two string to see just to print out the condition. So here I initialize the function and then I check in and check out. I check in initialize, I check in three, six, and three, six, and seven, right? Yeah. And I check out 15, six, and three. So six and three got checked out. I only have seven left. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, and then that's it. That's it. how the, the, the two string actually print out is true and false. For the available list. So this one actually I made a mistake. Yeah. For the hotel here. It's here. I you know it's this just written like a two day or three day ago. So let me check. Uh, so here is four. Yeah, it should be equal. Uh, actually uh, equal zero. I will be safer anyway. So I'll, I'll check, I'll reload the data until there. Okay. So that's actually called, uh, so this one, let me do this. Let me do this. This one, this one is wrong. This is okay. This one, hotel cost, hotel is now okay. So this cost hotel, I just, to uh, delete this hotel class, right? It's up to check out. Then what I'll do is like, because if I don't do it right now, I'll forget it. So let me, let me spend a couple of minutes to, to actually uh, modify it. Okay, sorry for this. So here I have, I use the fun, uh, let me see, I have a video I'm using this screen hunter so right here I have hotel create this and then pick up the line number up to check out wait I have a chicken on oh, no. yes oh, yeah. I have a chicken you so, have chicken yeah so up to this uh, check out So right here, I have post and then minimize to, to the right size to here. Okay, about right. Yeah. Okay, sorry for this. Then, let me see. Go to available list is done. Now the next one is non-recurring set and the occurrence list. Okay. And what is non-recurring set? It's like I have a bunch of words, and those words I want to put into a word list, but I don't want to repeat it. That's non recurring set. Sometimes you need to generate non recurring set. So, for example, I have an array of A, A, B, B, C, B, D, A, E. Okay? This one I'll convert it to A, B, C, D, E. That's non recurring set. Okay. So it's actually is, is a set, but I don't want to repeat it. Okay. That's the non repeating set. What is the occurrence list? Occurrence list actually is related to this uh, non recurring set. Mm -hmm. It's actually something like, okay, A totally I have one, two, three. So the occurrence list for this A is three. Okay, then B, I have one, two, three. So B is also three. C has one. D has one. one. E has one. So that's the current list. Is that okay? So 
this uh, this is commonly seen pattern in the APM. Okay, uh -huh. so here that's generally the number because it's uh, we have a word list and that's empty, right? And I read some data from some words, some line of words, and then I separate those token by uh, by by space. Okay, so after that I I actually trim it. Don't have the whatever leading and something, and then. If the dense is not zero, if this is e zero, then there's nothing there, right? So I don't need to compare. If it's not zero, then I would say what? I actually, if it is not zero, I'll add it to, to uh, right. uh, if it is not zero, let me see. Uh, no, this one actually is not zero. It means the token is not empty string, right? Okay. You have to check in the token, make sure it's not. Uh -huh. empty. Then if if the if the list already contain that token, then I won't put it in. So here either it's not. It should be not a empty string and not. Okay. So the list string contain it. Okay. So this part actually, what can I replace for this it contains a token? Can I replace this not this contains token? Uh, for this um, for this actually for this not this uh -huh. this whole thing what, what can I replace for this? Um for for double list doesn't contains doesn't contains a token. What what function can I use to replace it? The ice element of the tokens. What can I replace for this? Instead of using content, what can I use? Uh, Remember, and you can think of anything or no. Oh. Uh, if not, I'm going to give you the answer. Knowing what function should I use? Replace? No, no. You, you actually should use uh, double list that index of. Oh. Index of token i. It not existing means it need to be less than zero because it will return minus one. Right. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. contains. And the index of are uh, of the fun same function. Which one is more powerful? What do you mean more powerful? Uh, more versatile can be used for more uh, situations. Index of index of is more powerful. Yeah. Why? Why? Contents can only give you true or false. Uh -huh. uh, index of give you where it is. Yeah. So if it is less than is zero, then it's it's false, right? If it's greater than zero, yeah. very equal to zero, then it's actually true. Yeah. Right. So it actually have. So this guy only give you false or true, right? And this index of give you minus one and zero, one, two, three for for the locations. So this guy give you more information. Is that okay? Yeah. So right here, we actually add that token into there, right? Mm -hmm. Add that token into there. If it's not uh, happening again, it's, it's the first occurrence. Okay. And now we actually want to do a current list. So this one, we call it what? To collect the, the like I have an A, B, C, A, A, B, C, D. I want to collect like A how many times, B how many times, C how many times, D how many times. Uh, what, what's the function call? What's the algorithm call? Mm -hmm. So this one apparently A I have two times, B mm -hmm. I have two times, C I have two times, D I have two times. What is the data of these is called? Source. No, it's not sorted. There is a standard uh, statistic term for this. Oh. Have you taken any statistical probability class so far? 
No, I, we did probability only in like pre calc. I forgot. This one's oh, called histogram. Yeah, I remember. This one's yeah. called histogram. Okay. Yeah. Let me show you what's the histogram. Okay. To to tally the the number of occurrence for each uh, data is called histogram. Histogram is uh, often tested in in APCS, okay? Mm -hmm. Wait, it's often tested? Often tested, yes. Oh, okay. Say here, like a histogram of arrival, mm -hmm. right? Arrival per minute frequency. So, let me see, this one is not a good example. Let me try something else, okay? Uh, say here, so here, here I have a category like different countries, right? Yeah. And then I have a bar graph for, for example, like uh, this one's still not, it. this one is like. Wait, so a histogram is basically just a bar graph, but. Yeah, it's just a bar graph for, for the number of, uh, say, okay. Say for example, uh, some cherry tree, right? I look at the whole forest of the bright cherry tree. So then I say there are three of them uh, actually are 65 feet to uh, city, city feet to 65 feet. And then there are like three of them are 65 to 70 mm -hmm. height. Is that okay? Yeah. That's his okay. So you categorize things. Right here in our design here, I'm trying to check how many uh, time for each word, right? And yeah. here is like how tall is a tree, something like that, that is uh, actually a histogram. And say, let me see, for example, like, uh, for example, if you go to your school, right? And then you ask for your friends about Chinese zodiac. Okay, what is Chinese zodiac? You have rats. <laughs> have ox, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you ask for your friends uh, the year they are born, right? No. Yeah. Probably your, your friends, your customers are all the same year. But you ask some friend of you and then, okay, and then three of them are this, two of them are this. This is actually a histogram. Okay. Categorize it and see how many times it occurs. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Any of such problem is called a current list or the histogram. So right here I have like okay for right here I have A A B B C A D something like this. I see a A so A increase. I see a B. I see another A so A increase again. I see a B then B increase number of count increase. Is that okay? So right here okay. I started from my token list. Right, I switch to my token list. So if my uh, number J actually equals uh, the token list, the same, right? Mm -hmm. Then actually uh, my word count will increase. And my word count is according to my word list. So those word list is non repeated. And the token is running like A, A, B, B, C, C, D, those kind of things. So I see an A, then my A will increase. I see a B, then my B will increase. So for each token, I'll check which one actually is the same category. And then I'll increase that counter. Mm -hmm. So it's something like, uh, it's something like this. This algorithm is something like this. I have, I have my data A, A, B, C, D, E, A, whatever, right? Yeah. I have my W list as, a, B, C, D, E. So when my A come in, I check everybody, okay, this one plus one, right? Second A come in, okay, this one plus one. So one come in, okay, I switch two here, so my B plus one. D come in, uh, my uh, C come in, uh, my C plus one. D come in, my D plus one. E come in, my E actually plus one. And my final A come in, my A plus one again. 
So then I would have this as the number of occurrence inside here. Okay. And my P will have happen once. So eventually it will happen like this. Eventually what I will have after this operation and previous operation, I will have my W list. Now actually will have A, B, C, D, E, right? My W count will have three, one, 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 something like that. That's the result I show you. So this one, if you put into the bar chart, if you put this one in bar chart, it will be three, one, 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 one. That's the bar chart. So this is called histogram. So just basically counting the amount of times. Yeah, the amount of times. So, but this one, it needs to depend on the non-repeating set. Is that okay? Yeah. I want to pay something. So here I have this string, something like this, right? And then first I split by space. So actually I can trim the whatever. And then I see non recurring, uh, non empty one. I get rid of the empty one. And then actually I check with the uh, W list. If WA is starting connected, then I edit it. Okay. Then I set up the word count. As the histogram array by the W list and not by the token list, by W list. And each time I sweep to check whether the token is in the W list or not, it's equal or not. If equal, then my J, the W work count will increase. Is that okay? No. And then eventually I just print now, say right here, mm -hmm. my original string, string is like this. My record, long recurring set is like this, and it will tell me uh, which individual character uh, happened how many times. So say, uh, let me pick anyone, say my Z, Z happened here and here twice. Mm -hmm. And my F, my F is here, here twice. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a, a current list. And the next one, select selected list. So so far I cover available list, uh, non recurring list, and I also cover the uh, histogram, the, the occurrence list. Now, this one is called selected list. What, what is selected list? Let's check, okay? This problem is 2016 Q2C. Remove a student who has GPA lower than 2.0 from a school student list and put them into a list of a, or a summer class. Okay, this one actually need to be careful is uh, some grammar issue. Some grammar issue actually for a red list. You can have to remove, right? If you have to remove I and this I is integer, mm -hmm. then what does this mean? Is that the index? That's the index. You will remove the index i's index location. Yeah. But if I have a remove, here I have a new integer. I say three. What does this mean? Sir? No. No, it's not sir. For example, I have data like uh, one, five, four, three, two, six, one, uh, and seven, say. Right? So, for if, if this i equals one, which one will, will I? Five. You remove five, right? So and this one, new integer three, which one will I remove? So it's three. It will remove three, but it's not so index. Oh, is that called the fourth index? It actually will delete the data that has this value. So, if this is object type, Okay, and this function will return true or false. This function will return the object, so you return one. Be careful, these two functions, the input and output, need to be very careful. Okay, need to be very careful about this function. So let me, let me show you the grammar they have. 
Let me show you the grammar they have. So here, let's see. So here is a remove an element from a release in Java, okay? So they said we overload it. Remember there's a remove index. When you say remove index, now a set the index objects and then remove that object with that index, okay? And if you put an object in there, like a new integer that's an object, you will remove that object instead of that index, that number. So right here, I actually have this several number here and I remove one and remove one. It actually will remove 20 and 30. Yeah. Okay. And if I say remove integer one and two, that will actually remove last two numbers. Oh, that's cool. Is that okay? Yep. So that's actually different, okay? That's okay. actually different. And the return value also different. The return value, uh, who need to re uh, remove uh, one and two, and that actually will give you differences. So that let's try this. Let's try um, here. Let's try to have this function called remove s. So here I remove everything and I say import Java the UTIL that uh, already is. Okay, and here I have I remove everything. Right, I remove everything, and then here I say right, and here let me have here let me check this here public uh, steady I'm sorry steady uh, integer I mean let me not not integer let's use the integer. A is equal to that that is okay. Or you make a mistake in the uh, let me see. You make a mistake. You make a mistake in uh, in initialization. So if you use something like this, right? If you write here and say one, two, three, four, something like this, right? That's fine. But if you don't have this, and then you in your program you do a list. You cannot do this. You cannot write here. So write one, two, three, four. That's wrong. That actually is wrong. You cannot do this. Instead, right here, you need to do new integer. That like is. Is that okay? Yeah. Wait. This one is okay, okay? But if I remove this one, this is not okay, okay? This one is not okay. You see that my red bar is actually complete. This one grammatically is wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to put this back. Okay, right here. I let me have like nine, four, like one and two. Okay. Then after that, actually, ha I have this one. Let me do system dot out dot three nine. And then here I say, oh no, this one should be. Uh, I want to have a redist. Okay, it's okay. Now let me do another thing. A redist. And then integer al equals new register and then integer right here I put this arrays that as list and then here I need to import Java that util that arrays. Okay, and then I put my A list in here. So I fit my A list into my array list. This one is that I fit my fit my array, uh, array into my array list. So that one is fine. Then say, let me see here. Let me if I want to remove this four, right? I can actually do what? 
I can do al.remove four, right? And let me say system.out.printline and print out al. Okay, let's see what, what it is there over there. So actually I print. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I said remove four, actually you remove the number in this four. So it's B one, two, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. I remove the six. Mm -hmm. This is the index. And what did it return? It returned this six, right? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, now, now let me return, uh, remove another six. Now here mm -hmm. I have this uh, print nine. And right here I say new integer. And four. Oh, remove this the second. Right? I say four. So in this time will it remove uh zero, one, two, three, four? Will it remove one or remove uh the four object? The four. It will remove four. So this one is different. And what will it return? return for okay now let's do this then let's say system that out that green line and here I say al that set for with 10 right which one will be set to 10 Oh, the uh, six. Six will be six is come. Six is already printed. So one will be. Oh, six. oh, yeah, it's the next one since it's removed. Right, yeah. and what will be printed over here? Um, six. No, six is come. Six is oh, one, one, one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So actually, you will return one. That's the the value being replaced. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? You see, so the set value actually, why I mentioned about this is because in, uh, you haven't done the multiple choice uh, 2015, but you should do that in recent one week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a uh, AC review. I'm, I'm sorry, my dear. So here, multiple choice 2015, the 2015 multiple choice. And we move down to number 39 or 40, I think. In the last two or three questions. Let me see. 39, number 40. Okay, this one do test and see what, 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 what will be the result here. What will be the result here? What will be the answer for this question? How much time do, do, I, do, I, huh? do I do I get time to or hmm. let, let me give you two minutes. Let you work on this. Because you have uh, everyone is like two and a half minutes, right? I give you three minutes. Okay. So right here, it at the A, B, C, right? So you have actually have the A, B, C. It started from this A, B, C, okay? And after that, you try to do this. What will the result here? That you actually, uh, it actually goes through the whole list from index zero to index two. Oh, okay. And A, B, are one of them can be replaced by Alex. Uh, yeah. Right? And actually, it's print now the whatever result by setting function and then space. So what will be printed over here? Alex, Alex, Alex. Okay, and then after that, you actually go through the whole student list, right? You print them out again. What what will we print it here? Okay. So what? So is the answer here or which one? Which one? A B C D E H is not hard to do. It's A. You pick A, yeah. the answer is actually C. So when you pick uh, zero, 
you set zero and replace by it, ls, no. it actually will re, re, uh, return a, right? Return ls. If you go uh, actually here, k equals one. When k equals one, you actually exit this b, right? But you set with ls, but the all value will be returned actually print now b. Wait, 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 why? That's the function I just mentioned. That's the function I just mentioned. Actually, this one actually covered by ls, right? But the all value will be the return value for the set function. So you a will actually will print now b instead of a. So the next one you go to k equals two, right here you set it to be ls, right? So ls replace it. But the set function still returns c. So this result will be a b c for this loop. But after this, you go through the whole arrays again, try to print now, it becomes A, A, A. So it will be LS pass and call and something like this. Is that okay? Okay, I got it, I think yeah. So right here, if you don't trust me, let me I do this, I copy the whole thing. Wait, this is cannot be copied. Anyway, let me go to my function over here, right? Now I need to add that function called import java.util.bis. Okay, right here, and then I will say list tree and then student equals new array list tree. Right, and then students students dot add let me put a then I need just put this a and students dot add here with b right students dot add this one is C, right? Now the next one, let's do this. Let's have four integer k equals equals zero. K less than student by length. And now size, which is already the same size. And then k equals, and then what we will do is let's send that out and print. And this is and then right here, I should put in a uh, set uh, students that uh, set, right? I have a K and then I put set as A, right? Okay, something that if you write really something really too long, you just can cut to the next line. You don't need to stay in the same line to make it too long. Even this one, if you feel it's too long, you can cut it here, okay? So when you write the exam paper, don't make a very strong line, and let me show you. Some of your answer actually, or oh, this one is really too long. You can just cut this, whatever, down to here, that's fine. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Don't need to squeeze the whole thing into one line. Mm -hmm. This one's okay, actually, and the rest of them are okay. But if a lot, some lines are super long, don't, don't actually uh, do that, okay? So this one is the setting function. I put this out, and then let me go back to my exam paper. Right here, I will print nine, and then print students str print now, okay? So here, after this, I actually do system dot out dot print nine, and then I need to copy this for tries. And then after that, I do this. Inside here, I have four each group. And then string s, s, t, student. System dot out dot print. And then put this uh, s plus space. Okay, so this one I also need to plus space. So, Compile.
So here I'll just run it. Okay, you see that? Yeah. You should print out A, B, C, and A, A, A. Okay? So, so remember that set function, you will return the old value before you will set it. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. You, uh, oh yeah, we, I kind of forgot about it. Cause like you remember, you just told me about like the one, the four, those values and how like when it got replaced by 10, you, it yeah. still returns the old value. Yeah. 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 You will return the old value. Yeah. 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 I, I just got kind of confused because it was like it was on a program, so I just like kind of forgot. Okay, that's the the, the uh, little set function. Okay, so set return you need to know that. Okay, now fail student, remove student who has GPA on two from zero from the school, right? Mm -hmm. And then put that into a summer class list. So here I have a student, a GPA name, and then put the GPA and print out. Okay, this one is standard. Now. My Washington High School actually uh, put, well, we have some data, right? And then get GPA, uh, the standard, I will remove it from my, my school list and put it to summer, okay? So here I put in so many student data and then eventually I'll get summer class, right, from S list. So that would be the get summer class from your school is, is that okay? Mm -hmm. So the stu student array uh, been fit into there. And then the, the, the result will be whoever has the, uh, whoever has the GPA less than uh, 2.0 will be, will, will be removed from there. So remember this removal need to be doing downward traversal from the end of the, Array list is that okay uh -huh. for selected list. So that's how you select something and then put into some list. Okay, but if I don't want to remove it, what should I do? If I want to actually, uh, I don't want to remove it. What should you put in here? If not remove, if I want to pick up those students as GPA less than 2.0, but I don't want to kill them out from school and put them into so the set value. Get value. Get, okay. Yeah, you should get I and then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You get I, those guys actually are still GPA less than 2.0. I put them into summer class, but I didn't kick them now from school. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. That's a kickout version and then kickout version. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the kickout version and then kickout version. So right here, let me see, uh, let me see Washington High School, right? So here in my Washington High School, this one is a kickout version, right? This one is a kickout version. So here, if I change to, say, let me see, let me see. Uh, so here, if I put this one as like get I, right? My summer class still be there. Let me check. After this, let me system that out of three nine. Say student list. Okay. And then press n class A list. Right? So here I used to get I and then get a student list will be the the one after this get function, right? And after I return, I'll print out a summer class list. Okay, see what happened. Okay, so this one, let's see the carol still still be in there, right? Eddie still be in there, right? Carol, Eddie, and then George still be in there, right? See the difference. See this one actually. Anybody who less than 2.0 GPA still be there, right? Uh -huh. But but if I change this to remove, then that guy, those guys will be kicked out from school. Yeah. I put into some of this. Then here it doesn't have the GPA lower than uh, lower than that 2.0 uh, now. See? 
Okay, so when you swim people, some problem you need to see whether it's uh, if the pig one need to be still be there or not be there, be there. You have to be careful about this. Okay. Okay, so this part is our data operations. Good night, then. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye now. <laughs>